Right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are across the globe. Welcome to On the Sofa with yours truly, Esther Austin. Well, today I have the privilege of talking to Brenda Eager. I literally just met this lady, but I was so impressed and I was so impressed upon that I felt the need to connect with her. Um, I've just sat in a very empowering voice training, vocal training, and you can put me right with the correct words, Shirley Brenda, session with Brenda. And I'll share with you all, for years, I've wanted to sing for years. People have been goading me to sing. And with this lady, I just felt my heart really open and explode. So Brenda, welcome. Thank you so much, Esther. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you were on the call this morning. Well, it was a pleasure because and I just love your energy. You've got this bounce and this bubble in you, and you're like, "This is infectious, man!" You know, I, I, you know, it's it's infectious, and and that's that's really a, a bonus and a benefit. So, Brenda, let me ask you, and I like to ask my guests in a nutshell, okay. in a peanut shell or a crab shell, who is Brenda Eager? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. Brenda Lee Eager is a young, <laughs> yeah, still young girl that was born in Mobile, Alabama, raised on a farm, did all the farm stuff, I picked corn and peanuts and cotton and all of that uh, stuff that you do on a farm. Mm -hmm. But when I was just a three, four years old, I was singing. Okay. And I told my mother that I would sing and travel the world to make people happy. So what got me through the farm and the, the work and from sunup to sundown to all was always a song. Mm -hmm. I'd start in the morning and whether it was corn or whatever, tomatoes, whatever, grabbing up, I did it with a song. There was always a song on my lips. When I got in the third grade, mm -hmm. I started writing poetry. And I, um, I would write in detail. If I wrote about a butterfly, I would say, not just a butterfly, I would say, there's a blue butterfly with, with, with white tips on his, you know, so in detail. And I started doing that in poetry. And by the time I was in the ninth grade, I was a songwriter. I heard Smokey Robinson say, like a snowball rolling down the side of a snow covered hill. It's growing. When I heard a song described like that, and so much and imagery. I knew I was a songwriter. So I started writing songs and singing. So I became a singer-songwriter very early in my career. And uh, I went to, right out of high school, I went to New York. I'm thinking, okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little girl in the South mm -hmm. and I'm going to go to New York City to become a quote, quote, unstar, a star at 18 years old. Uh -huh. and, New York City, I'm not telling you. Girl, everybody was moving so fast, and I was, people were walking by me so fast, and I couldn't get arrested. I couldn't find a job singing anywhere. Uh, but my whole thing was to go to the Apollo Theater. Mm, yes. I said, I'm going to get to New York, and I'm going to the Apollo, and I'm going to audition, and they're going to find, they're going to see my talent. Mm -hmm. This is an 18 year old thinking. I went to the Apollo. Um, and uh, they turned me around at the door. I said, but I come all the way from Alabama to audition. You gotta let me audition. And I said, nope, you're not gonna do that. You go home, go back to where you came from. Uh -huh. So I did, but then five years ago, I was headlining at the, at the Apollo. So uh, I thought that would be a good story, but it was true. Um, I went back, got married, had a wonderful, I have a beautiful daughter and two grandkids. But I moved to Chicago with my husband, and that's where I started doing my civil rights work. I okay. joined an organization called Operation Breadbasket, and it was headed up by the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Mm -hmm. I joined a 126-piece choir, and the Reverend Jackson took four girls, one of those girls being me, and mm -hmm. a 20-piece orchestra, and taking us around the country rallying and singing and performing it and helping to get black officials elected for the first time. So I was right there in the middle of it when all of your black um, congressmen and, and mayors were being elected for the first time. That was back in the 
And then, of course, I kept writing a song and I wrote a song called If It's Real What I Feel with Chuck Jackson, who became um, Natalie Cole's producer. Took the song to Jerry Butler and Jerry liked the song, wanted to meet me, met him. We started recording together. We had gold records, did the soul thing, soul train thing. And, 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 and it was a great, great, great learning ground and great um, participating and singing as a duet with Jerry. That was great. And then I came to California. We came out here to do Soul Train. Uh, oh my gosh. And, and we left Chicago in a blizzard. Uh -huh. I mean, it was snowing. And when I got to California, the palm trees were swaying in the wind. And the limo driver had on Bermuda shorts and flip flops. And I said, this is where I'm going to live. And I told Jerry, I said, oh, I'm moving here. And Jerry says, Ben, B, he called me B. You can't really just up and leave Chicago. Your recording company, everybody said, oh, Jerry, I've got to live in California. So that's why, I, that's why I'm in California today. But um, I've been in the recording business and in the, and, and, and the uh, writing business for many, many, many years. Mm. And I've learned a lot over the years. I've worked with so many people, including Aretha and Ray Charles and Gladys Knight and Diana Ross. And you just and I've worked with all those people. Had songs re recorded uh -huh. by uh, Ray Charles, Aretha. I had songs recorded by Prince. I had by Mavis Staples, by Bobby Womack. All of them have recorded my songs. And then about 38 years ago, I had a friend of mine. She was a, a doctor friend of mine. And she says, uh, Sugar, I want to take some voice lessons. And I'm like, oh, well, I could point you to my voice teacher. She said, no, I want to take it from you. I want you to teach me. Uh, I, said, and she, I said, I don't know. What would I, what would I teach you? And this, what, these words changed my life. I became a vocal coach. She said, teach me what you know. Mm. And when I started teaching her what I know, I found out that I knew more than I knew I knew. And that was 38 years ago. So now, in all of these rest of these 38 years, I've learned so much more about the voice, the power of the voice. It's the most powerful tool we have. Absolutely. So Absolutely. we can suppress that voice or we can free it up. And the free it up is, is, is just spirit wanting to express itself through you. And when you get that in your mind, not, not the intellect, but I want to be this so I can do that. No. You want to be where you're a giver of your talent. And that, that talent always makes a living for you. You don't ever have to worry. When you really commit it, you never have to worry about it. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm just a starving musician. You're starving because that's what you put in up here. You got to clear that out and know that if you're given a talent, you're given the means to make a living with that talent. You just have to trust. I mean, I've done other jobs on the way, you know. Uh, if, if something wasn't happening musically here, I go and, and, and I don't care what it is, you know. I'll clean a house, whatever. That was back in my younger days. But the whole while, like the whole while I was on that farm, whole while I'm singing a song, I'm, I'm seeing myself on that stage. I'm doing everything to put me in that consciousness of doing what I do. And I always tell my students, don't let the intellect in. Mm, yeah, because it, it would block you. That's, 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 that's a block. Always from the heart. You always give and sing from the heart. And when you do that, you don't even have to worry. You don't have to worry about if I did it good or do they like me or it. None of that matters. What matters is did I give my 100%? Did I go to the wall? Did I go to the belly? I call it sometimes. Did, the, did, did I go to the belly of my passion? Did mm -hmm. keep me doing that? Because when you do that, you're standing naked and saying, this is who I am. And I've come to give this gift to you. So that's basically what I do. I, I, I have lots of private students around the country. And, uh, but lately, I wanted to do this and get a, and get a this wonderful people who, who just want to feel the power and express who they are. Because it's really who, it's who we are. 
and express it fully without fear, without wondering what anybody's going to say. Because when you know something, nobody can punch a hole in it. When you know that you know, and it's not the ego talking, it's your heart. And you've done the work to make it so. If I learned my ABCs, and I know them really, really well in the second grade, mm -hmm. you cannot, I raise my hand every time. Anybody want to repeat this? <laughs> me, 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 I want to do it. Because I know it. I've studied and I know it. Same thing with your voice. Learn that voice, learn the power you have there, and then use it. But you know what's really interesting, and uh, you've sort of captured everything that I wanted to capture. I was trying to. <laughs> but what's really beautiful as well is that for those people who come to you who may be broken, wounded, carrying their fears, because you, you have become it, you have lived it, you embody it, then you can, when they come before you, they can give themselves permission and allow themselves to put it down because also your energy gives them that peace and that trust to lay it down. Because even there is no way that someone can sit in front of you, Brenda, and not be, not be vibed or revived or jazzed but there, there is no way because your energy just carries across the airways i mean i'm in the uk you're in the us um but it's nothing because energy is energy it doesn't matter where you could be in Timbuktu and it's energy and so your 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 voice your enthusiasm your passion and ultimately your purpose to reach into people's lives and space because you are it they will feel it they you will feel me. it. We just met today, but you know me. You I, just know me. I only met you, what, two, literally two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it just feels like a real privilege, a real honor. And But I do feel that when we allow ourselves to just lay off, put our mantles, you know, shed our skins, but it's not easy because you have to go on a journey to get here. I always say it's an adventure. Absolutely. Be willing to go on an adventure within and Absolutely. discover who we really are, that power and that presence. And I want you to know that it's, it's a safe place. It's a safe place. Yes. You can trust here. You can just reside in this space and share what you want to share. Sometimes it brings tears with my students and we're both crying, but we're, we, we get healed of some things. The voice can actually when you when you take off the layers of your voice, there's some pain down there somewhere. I had childhood pains and stuff. But you know, when you use that voice and the energy and the frequency of that voice, it can heal, it can actually heal your body. Brilliant. So then on that note, tell us a little bit more about the classes that you are doing and how people can access information to join up. And I would suggest people, you've listened to this interview, you're listening to this interview, and you can see the reality of what Brenda brings and what she can bring to your life, bring to your space, bring to your world. So Brenda, please share how people can contact you and you know just let them know when you actually host these online sessions. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave that to my wonderful producer. She'll tell you how to reach, reach us. But just be open, open to learning more of who you are. Because you're going to like that person. That singer down there, it's just begging to come out. Like, look, I want my time too. I want my time too. <laughs> so let's give the, the singer, the speaker, you know, the, the comedian, whatever it is. When we use our voice, let's use our voice to heal, excite, you know, uh, empower, release. You know, and release all of those things for ourselves and others. Fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Brenda Eager, Brenda Lee Eager. And um, if you can email wendyvaughn at gmail.com, and I'll spell that for yourself. So it's Wendy, W-E-N-D-I. V A U G A U G H N at gmail.com. Or if you can't remember that, then just contact me. You can DM me. I'll put the details in the um in the um, body below. So Brenda, thank you so much. And um 
Mm. I, I do believe that people will be attracted to your to your sessions and I'm gonna be in touch afterwards because my voice, that side of my voice is ready to explode. Of course she is. Of course. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Pleasure. All right, thank you. All right, baby. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.